I've written a book called The Outside Edge. Um, it's aimed at people that feel like outsiders. The reason I wrote it was because this is my fourth book of the sort of self-help genre and I think this one brings everything together. I've realised that there's a lot of insecurities I have and you can divide up the insecurities but there's actually a holistic feeling you have of simply being an outsider and I think millions of people have that feeling of just simply not belonging. The Outside Edge starts uh, with me having a very good look at uh, what do we mean by an outsider because a lot of outsiders, if you read the media, a lot of outsiders, it, 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 it seems to be gender based, it's the woman in the man's world or it's race based, it's the black guy in the white guy's world. But I'm saying that an outsider can be, you can be right in the middle of your own tribe, your own peer group and you're on the edge, you're an outsider. So it's a much more psychological condition than these vertical barriers that people are saying. I'm not saying they don't exist, these vertical barriers and people don't have issues when they are when they are the woman in a man's world etc but what I'm saying is that you can look exactly like the insider tick 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 and be an outsider When you read that checklist, it can, it can all seem like they're negative traits. It can seem like one after the other of bad things that, that, that you're about. Well, in fact, they're not all negative traits. What they do is just suggest you're a, a, a type of person, and that type of person is an outsider. But is, it, is an outsider generally an, a negative thing? Is it an, a negative identity? Well, it, by others, it's often considered a negative identity. But by you, you have to accept that you are an outsider and therefore you have to start looking for the positives of it. Just about every outsider I've ever met has a, has a creative bent in one form or another. Not necessarily in the sort of arts, but in all sorts of areas where there, there's a creativity. They think outside the box and it's that which is often seen problematic, certainly in the sort of community life, is seen as problematic. And and it's that actually that's that's potentially your salvation. Well, one key aspect of this is entrepreneurship, for instance, where um, creativity and entrepreneurship absolutely go together. Um, if, you're, um, if you're a thinker outside the box, you'll think of different ways of doing things and you'll be frustrated by the way things are done now. So, uh, so entrepreneurship can um, be developed um, using your creativity. You can suddenly marry the two, having develop enormous entrepreneurial skills, and then that bloody mindedness actually comes on your side because not only does it make you more creative, it makes you not take no for an answer. It makes you force yourself to sort of bash forward. Now, you remember we talked about fear earlier, but you're being forced to overcome that fear because you've got this creativity, you've got this entrepreneurialism, well, you've got no choice but to move it forward. What are you going to do? Just abandon it? Well, that's a terrible defeat. You have to move it forward. So you've got that motivation to, to move yourself forward. I put together in the book um, sort of 10 signposts that can help us find meaning and, um, and I'll just go through uh, uh, a few of them now. One for instance was focus on the anguish, you know, what is that, get to the bottom of what is causing that suffering and what is that anguish, what makes you an outsider. For me it was very much my education and my poor education, I felt that that was when I realised just how poorly educated I was, I spent my entire life focusing on overcoming that poor education. And I so for me it was very much um, uh, the, um, the, the the anguish I had in terms of feeling like an ignorant person and wanting to overcome that, um, wanting to overcome that. Now, secondly, and related to that, is I think it should be a positive pursuit. Therefore, if you look at me, I focused on that anguish. I focused on the pain of being uh, poorly educated. But the positive side of that was I therefore had a reason to become educated. I wanted to find myself as an educated person. I saw that education for its own sake was a positive thing. And then the third aspect I think here would be um, open your mind. I think what can happen is, um, to outsiders, especially when you become defensive and you have self-esteem issues, is you have what's known as a fixed mindset. This is from Carol Dweck, who's a Stanford University psychologist, and she wrote a book called Mindset. And if you have a fixed mindset, you tend to think your attributes are fixed. And, the, uh, and what happens is you become very defensive because you're thinking, people are thinking, oh, well, they're going to find out that I'm, I'm, I'm low caliber, that, I don't, that I'm pretty ignorant and things. And you can have a fixed mindset.
mindset. Now, obviously, that was going to be my mindset in life. Given my poor education, I was bound to have that mindset. I was going to end up being absolutely fearful that people would find out simply how ignorant I was. So the way over that is to have a growth mindset. Where your ignorance is just the starting point. It doesn't really matter. You're here to learn. And every time you meet somebody, it's what you can learn from them, not what you know you what you can prove to them about yourself. It's what you can learn from them. So a minute you just flip you from the fixed mindset to the growth mindset, and that way the, the whole world opens up to you, and you can and I think the, the meaning at that point will start sort of flowing in at that point. I think a key aspect of this, all of this, um, is that you must pursue excellence. I think you've got to find out what you're good at and it can be a tiny grain of something. Everyone's good at something and it can be a tiny grain. I, I wrote in a previous book about uh, one girlfriend I had where she thought she was absolutely rubbish at everything and then used to whip me at Connect Four every time we played it and eventually I realized that she had one of these brains that could just talk about, that, that, that knew about sequence and algorithms etc etc. Now she didn't do anything with it but actually she had that one slither of enormous intellect that she didn't um, she didn't decide to build on now what I'm saying is build on that look for your absolute bit of excellence where are you best and build on that for me it was always writing essays at school often my my spelling and my grammar was all over the place because I was poorly educated but I nonetheless used to love writing essays at school so writing became my thing and um, so and I would say that's what you've got to look for you've got to look for the for, for excellence that you will not find meaning I think without pursuing excellence As an outsider, you're going to have issues and you're going to have barriers you need to overcome. For instance, you're very poor at strategy. You don't really have a very strong handle on what strategy is because you're a bit reactive. You're about the defensiveness rather than being open and about moving forward. So you need to adopt a strong strategy in order to be able to move forward. Now, there's plenty in the book on strategy. I don't particularly want to go into it now. Another issue is judgment. Often you're a bad decision maker because your judgments are actually awry. You're, they're based on defensiveness, they're based on you sort of with your fixed mindset perhaps sort of going oh dear I don't want to be found out whereas actually you need a strong decision making process that you need to adopt. So we can get to a point where things are progressing very well. We have an open mind, a growth mindset, um, we uh, know how to deal with people, we know how to make good judgments uh, and things are progressing well but we are who we are we're always going to have um, uh, elements of us that are uh, disabling and outsiders I think need to be aware of that that as they go through life there's always it's not that uh, you cut the chains of your former existence they it, the chains are there and they just become stretched and you can find yourself uh, falling back to your previous negative state uh, very quickly so you have to develop awareness at that point. I think the word insight is very is a very strong one uh, where you develop uh, the uh, the perspective and insight of the person you want to be but also of the person you were and of the person that you could be dragged back to if things start going wrong particularly when it goes wrong with other people when you're being judged by negatively by other people for instance you will um, you you will come across some very negative people um, as you go through, uh, uh, as you grow and as you go through um, your entrepreneurial um, exploits and it's how you deal with those negative people. For instance, I react very badly to anyone that sort of insults me. Uh, I become, I immediately take on the insult, I absorb the insult, I can't deflect it very well and what I've learned to do is not react and where I used to be very reactive and react and be defensive and before you knew it, their reactions on my reaction, my reactions on their reaction, and you're in a massively negative place very, very quickly. What I've learned to do, and I don't always succeed at it, but what I try and do is focus on my second reaction. In that my first reaction was, oh my God, this person's really negative, they're a complete psychopath, they completely insulted me. What I now need to do is think about my second reaction and eventually you can get to the point where your second reaction happens so quickly they don't even notice your first reaction. Now that takes time but the second reaction is the one you need to focus on and the quicker you can focus on that the better. 
finally, I end with uh, 10 rules that outsiders should obey. Outsiders are not very good at obeying rules. They see rules as something that they should immediately not obey and certainly question. And what I'm saying is, no, there are 10 rules for you, you need to obey. The first one I'd pick is uh, accept who you are. You you are who you are. You cannot be somebody else. It's an impossibility to be somebody else. So you have to accept yourself. And I think the key to accepting yourself is to understand yourself, understand where you've come from, understand how you got to where you are. Uh, and, and I mean that psychologically, and then accept that. Second is participate. I think uh, 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 outsiders are terrible at not participating at removing themselves from society and from from their own community and i'm not saying you shouldn't run away from your community and your own society but you need to find the right society and community for you you must participate you must find where you belong and you must participate and that you cannot isolate yourself and finally, I'd say value your progress in that what you can do, a lot of outsiders will find themselves not uh, in any better shape psychologically as they move forward. So they can find themselves in a much better place with their own company, with their own uh, family situation that's really working for them everything going well and yet psychologically they're in no better place they still feel alienated they still feel anger they still feel that everybody's against them uh, but so you need to mark where you are you need to reflect at a certain point and look back and say actually i've got a long way to go but i've come an awful long way mm -hmm.